Geelong and the Giants for us is the first of the finals at Optus Stadium. I cannot wait. There's no tomorrow anymore for these sides. And we've got Jeremy Cameron. He's playing against his former side. And Sam Taylor, he'll probably go to Tom Hawkins. But I want to go through the record of Geelong. A lot of pressure on Chris Scott. But he does bounce back pretty well, Ross, in week two of the finals. They get to the top four. Unfortunately, can't win very often. But they bounce pretty well over five years of his time coaching the club. Yeah, they do a lot, right? They've yeah. had a lot of personnel change. But they'll be confident they get it done. They don't need to invent anything new here. They just need to get back to understand their principles, what works for us, what gets it done, and everyone play their role and clean their game up. They were messy last week. So we'll talk about what Geelong need to do shortly, but what do the Giants need to do and what's the flaw in Geelong potentially to get a hold of them? Well, it, it's hard to bring it out, but we talk about the catch code. So one of the key indicators, the competition's come back to contest the ball. They've lost seven games this year, the Cats, and in five of them they lost contest the ball and four of them they got smacked. So it's really critical for them you need to win it early because if they get hold of it, they're very good at controlling it. So we saw that against Melbourne in the second half. So GWS, they need to get around clearances, fall of the ball, ground ball, contested ball, contested marks. Ross Port got a hold of them there last Friday night as well and want to show the pressure that they applied. And Geelong could not have played any worse and I think it was because of this pressure. And we'll get to what the Giants did to them the last time they well, met. Well, they were fanatical, all yeah. their players. Robbie Gray, um, Fantasia, they were really fanatical. Stopping the switches and it forced uncharacteristic fumbles. So... GWS went down to Cadinia Park, which I still call it, and they really applied that same level of heat with a no-name team yeah. under pressure. It was the miracle on ice, and they got it done. Contest the ball and elite pressure. So that's the formula. They've got a few injuries, both greens out, it looks like. So, But if they bring this heat like Port did and they win the contest the ball, then they can be away. Yeah, That's the cat card. Yeah, I agree. There was one of the biggest upsets of the season, but Toby Green kicked four goals in that game, so he's not going to be there to play in that one. Now, Geelong, they love to be settled in their back, back line. Tom Stewart's not there. They've been rattled. But the way Port attacked them last week, Ross, was also a sign of things to come of what the Giants will do to them. I love where you get Collar Jasney's back turn and they're coming at them. He falls over through a lot of panic in the end. Once you get a defender yeah. looking at the ball and not the opponent, yeah. it's all over. But it's the overlap run. So it's the up-tempo footy. Look at the run. Disrupts the man on the mark, Blixavs, and then the man on the mark can play on. And you get to the one-on-ones before the help and the support can fold back from the off-ball side and help them. But the Giants, even internally, this was a switch for them. They took it on. Whether it was outside or inside, they ran, they overlapped. A lot of movement inside 50. It was hard for Stewart to get across. And they were able to take a lot of one-on-one -on -one marks. So before, if you can come out the front of a stoppage, chain it out with hands, you take ground, and you put them out of uh, position. Although Stewart's pretty good there. But the heat around the gold mouth, so they took out the roll-off. They got it deep to one-on-ones, and they got it there quickly. So it's the form, the contested ball pressure and speed on the game to expose their defenders. So we're expecting the Cats to bounce back in this one, but we want to go talk selection, like Chris Scott would be over the next couple of days, and that is get Mark Blixar's back to where he plays his best footy. Well, I think he's dropped off a fair bit, and I'd send him back to full-back, Ross. That's where he's been a best and fairest winner in recent times. Which you highlighted to yeah. me, and I just think with Stewart out, yeah. they just looked a little bit unsettled. Yeah. Bring his experience, bring his size, bring his athleticism, and he can cover a lot of ground and get across and help. And we're bringing this guy back in. So Radagalia didn't get picked last week, but what he does is he can play the ruck role that Blixavs has been asked to play, and Zach Tui can come in and also play that wing yeah, role. Yeah, and I think what else it does, we talk, we, we're talk, we going to talk about yeah. Rowan, but you've got Hawkins, Cameron mm. and Rowan, but all of a sudden Radagalia. So GWS have, have their hands full. Someone's going to get a mismatch and an undersized defender, and I think Geelong are good enough to exploit that. So I think helps them in the ruck, it's a great point by you at match yeah. committee. It helps yeah. their defence, but I think Radagalia takes the pressure off the other forwards yeah. and puts GWS under a lot of pressure. Now, I want to ask you about this guy. He hasn't been a great finals before. I know the stats don't show much of a difference to home and away footy, but he started in the forward line, got beaten by a Lear, then he went back. What do you do? Back line, forward line, or not play yeah. him at all? Look, I'm a, more of a player's man, so I'm an ex-coach. So I find it hard... Yeah. to put him up there, but we're in the job of highlight. Yes. He was disappointing last week, but I've also seen during the year his ability to go back, kick clutch goals, become a great part of that forward line and deliver. So look at the numbers, they're really even. He just needs to get the ball in the hot space, in, in his hunting territory in front of goals. And that's why I think if Radagalia does come in, he can deliver. Yeah. I remember against Fremantle, it was a prelim, 
It was all over Sydney, but they isolated him in the goal square. His ability, if you channel the ball to him, to come out in the lead with his speed and power and his kick, he can kick a bag. Yeah. So I think they need to give him that opportunity. OK, Ross, give us a tip on this one. Yeah, Geelong, I, I haven't jumped off him. Yeah. I think they'll regroup and get it done. And an undermanned GWS be vulnerable.